Science is supposed to be the tool we use to figure out the universe, but sometimes tools fail to do what they were intended to do. That includes science. Sometimes science fails to give us the answer we hope it will, and we remain even more baffled than we were before. These are 20 mysterious discoveries science still can't explain. Number 20. Miniature Coffins Miniature coffins are some of the last things you expect to encounter while out on a walk, but that was the reality for a group of boys hunting rabbits in Edinburgh on the slopes of Arthur's Seat. While exploring a secluded area on the northeast side of a hill in 1836, the young boys found a small cave in a rock, and hidden within it were 17 tiny coffins. The small coffins were neatly arranged in three tiers, and each was only around 3.7 inches long. Within them were wooden dolls dressed in hand-stitched and glued clothing that appeared to be custom made for those dolls. It was probably quite a relief for researchers to learn that they weren't housing small human bodies. Why on earth were they there? Well, we might never know for sure, but some experts have their theories. According to the Edinburgh Evening Post, there was once an ancient custom in Saxony that involved burying effigies to represent friends who had died in ancient lands. Another newspaper also said that an effigy was given a Christian burial if sailors were lost at sea. All figures were hand-carved, and the Coffins were believed to be made by a shoemaker going by the use of a hooked knife, nails, and embellishments. Some of the figures were also missing arms, and the fabric dated back no more than six years before they were hidden in the hills. We have no confirmed answers for why the coffins were there, so what do you think these coffins represent? Now it's time for the odd topic. Scientists' terrifying new discovery under Earth changes everything, and it all began with the Kola Superdeep Borehole. The hole is the deepest hole that's ever been drilled for scientific investigation. In the late 50s to early 60s, the Soviets and Americans both made separate efforts to drill as deep as possible into the depths of the Earth's crust. While the American project came to a sad early finish due to a lack of funding, the Soviets kept going. Going. They created the Kola Superdeep Borehole, the deepest hole in the world. At its deepest, it extends 7.5 miles into the Earth, and it's what's been found toward that deepest point that baffled scientists. Some kind of peculiar magnetic force that nobody quite understands has been interfering with the drills and preventing them from drilling further. The drills have even broke. They just can't push further into the ground. What is happening there? What do you think? As always, let us know your thought in the comment section down below using the hashtag oddtop. Topic. Number 19. Atacama Skeleton Researchers were entirely stunned after they made an incredible discovery in the Atacama Desert of Chile in 2003. They found a tiny, six-inch long skeleton that looked like it could be from a human, but also possibly an alien. In fact, many people simply assumed immediately that those researchers had found proof of alien life. You might assume that it's easy enough to tell if a skeleton is from a human or not, but this tiny body had physical deformities, so it made it hard to know if it was a human or non-human human primate. It had 10 ribs rather than the 12 we usually have, and it had a cone-shaped skull. The face and jaw also appeared squished. Some people thought it might have been a miscarried fetus or premature birth, but experts weren't convinced. The skeleton formed part of a private collection until 2009. In 2012, scientists were provided with an opportunity to study the skeleton with CAT scans, genetic sampling, and x-rays. They learned that the skeleton was, in fact, a human from the local area, and the chest cavity had a heart and lung remains inside. Most interestingly, the skeleton was not a fetus. It had mature teeth, well-developed bones, and growth plates in the leg bones you typically find in a 6-8 to eight year old child. So why was the skeleton so tiny? Well, experts have a few theories. It might have had dwarfism, but it was deemed too small to fit into this category. It might have also had progeria, which meant the skeleton could belong to a fetus with progressive aging. It could have even been mummified as a stillborn, but that doesn't explain the growth plates or missing ribs. Basically, scientists are still stumped. Number 18. Ancient Dinosaur Figurines 
1945, German merchant Waldemar Ullstrud was riding a horse outside the town of El Toro when he saw something sticking out of the dirt in a dried-up riverbed that appeared to be a clay figurine. Upon closer inspection, he found a number of different figurines that appeared to be from a pre-classic Chupacuaro culture. Waldemar was excited, and over a period of six years, he built up a collection of over 35,000 figurines with the help of one of his employees, Odilon Tinajero. He told Odilon that if he could find him more figurines, he'd pay him one peso for each intact one or figurines with pieces that could easily be put together. Over those years, he acquired a number of strange figurines, including dinosaurs and dinosaurs with riders on their backs. It seemed impossible that humans could have interacted with and even tamed dinosaurs. In 1953, the Mexican government decided to do its own research to see if it was a hoax or not. They sent four archaeologists to an area about one mile from where Valdemar had found his figurines and dug down around six feet. And this is where it gets exciting. Like Valdemar, they did find figurines, including dinosaurs. They said all figures dated back to around 800 BC, except for the dinosaurs. The scientists concluded that the dinosaurs were likely modern productions since human interaction with dinosaurs was impossible. I'm not convinced, are you? Number 17. Mummified Giant Figure we all know what fingers look like and how big they are, because, you know, most of us have them. But what if you saw something that looked like a finger, but was much larger than any finger we know about today? Turkish woman Rumesa Gelci currently has the longest fingers in the world, with one measuring 4.4 inches long. But there's apparently a mummified finger in Egypt measuring an incredible 15 inches. That would mean the person it belonged to would be an absolute giant at over 16 feet tall. Now, all we have is a photo, so so scientists haven't been able to verify whether it's authentic. But apparently, the image of the giant finger was taken in 1988 by researcher Gregor Spori in Egypt. He had paid a man from a grave robber dynasty to take the picture, so it doesn't form part of any museum collection. And as scientists haven't been able to find the finger, let alone verify its size or authenticity, we might never know whether 16 feet tall people ever walked among us. Number 16 Fossilized Dinosaur Eggs in 2015, construction workers in China's Guangdong province were working on a road when they uncovered something incredible, 43 fossilized dinosaur eggs. And even though they would have been there for between 65 to 89 million years based on previous findings, at least 19 of the eggs were still completely intact. As incredible as it is to find fossilized dinosaurs, this isn't the first time they've been found in China. In fact, the city of Heiyuan in Guangdong province has long been called the home of dinosaurs. This is because at least 17,000 eggs have been found beneath the mountainous terrain in the area since 1996. There's also a museum in the city with an expansive dinosaur collection, including 200 footprint fossils, 11 fossilized skeletons, and thousands of eggs. The species of the latest eggs wasn't immediately known, but the largest was around 5 inches in diameter. Imagine cracking that open for breakfast. According to a museum curator in the city, discovering fossilized dinosaur eggs is pretty common due to the red sandstone formations. Number 15. Sea Dragon Fossilized Skeleton Finding any type of fossilized critter is pretty cool, but imagine finding a sea dragon or ichthyosaur measuring 33 feet long. It's being called the largest and most complete fossil of its kind in the UK. The sea dragon lived about 180 million years ago when dinosaurs were alive, and the fossil was found in the East Midlands on the Rutland Water Nature Reserve in 2021. According to reports, conservation team member Joe Davis for the Leicester and Rutland Wildlife Trust was walking across a drained lagoon when he saw what looked like clay pipes in the mud. He said to another worker, Paul Trevor, that they looked like vertebrae. With the possibility that those clay pipes were vertebrae, the pair followed what might have very well been a spine down until they found what looked like a jawbone. They couldn't believe what they were seeing, a marine reptile that evolved during the Triassic period and disappeared from records about 90 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. Archaeologists spent a considerable amount of time excavating the fossil in 2021, and the discovery appeared on the BBC show Digging for Britain in early 2022. Number 14. Salzburg Cube 
The Salzburg cube, also known as the Wolf's Egg Iron, is a cuboid mass of iron found in Austria in 1885. The one pound, 12 ounce thing has four flat and two convex sides with a deep groove all the way around it. It's hard to know exactly what it is and its purpose, and it's been an object of great curiosity since its discovery in the 1880s. It was supposedly found by a workman at the Braun Iron Foundry in Austria who was breaking up a block of lignite. It was found within the seam and was reported to the Natural History Society Society of Bonn in 1886 by mining engineer Adolf Gerlt. Initially, scientists thought it was of meteoric origin, but a later analysis ruled that out. When it was analyzed in the late 1960s, it contained no cobalt, chromium, or nickel, which meant it couldn't have been of meteoric origin. It also had no sulfur, which meant it wasn't pyrite, which is commonly known as fool's gold. As it also had minimal magnesium content, experts believed the wolf's egg iron was cast iron, potentially used in early mining machinery. Number 13. Hot Shabib we don't know a lot about our past, but we usually gain some pretty good theories and eventually see them as facts. That is not the case with Khat Shabib, an almost 100-mile-long wall in Jordan. While it lies in ruins today, archaeologists were able to map the wall using aerial photography. We don't know who built it, why they built it, or when they built it. It's a complete mystery. What we do know is that it was built out of stone and likely stood about 3.3 feet tall and 1.6 feet wide. Due to its short height and width, it probably had nothing to do with defense and was more likely a type of boundary fence for farmers and nomadic pastoralists. After researchers identified the fence, they also found the ruins of structures along the wall that they describe as towers. They would have been between 6.6 .6 and 13.1 feet in diameter, and some of them were built after the wall. Archaeologists ponder whether those towers could have been used as watch posts or even as good vantage points for hunting animals. To this day, we still have no idea why ancient people would have spent years building a wall spanning dozens of miles, and we might never get to the bottom of it. Number 12. The Rongo Rongo Riding if you're going to pay a visit to Easter Island, you're likely going to do so to see Moai, monolithic statues carved by the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island. But you might also visit to see a carved wooden fish. And sure, the fish is pretty cool looking. It sits in a glass cabinet and is about the size and shape of a boat oar. But it's not so much the fish that grabs your attention, it's the writing on it. Look closely and you'll see rows of glyphs that look like animals, plants, human forms, circles, chevrons, and other unique symbols. It's called Rongo Rongo, and it's the only indigenous writing system developed in Oceania before the 20th century. It's also believed to be one of the last remaining mysteries on the island. So far, experts believe that the Rongo Rongo writing system was used for religious purposes rather than a script they used every day. It's also believed that only wise, literate people could interpret the Rongo Rongo text. It disappeared in the 19th century, and we only have a few pieces of evidence to confirm its existence. Number 11. Baghdad Battery Ancient people didn't need batteries. It's not like they had smartphones to power, but that doesn't mean they didn't have batteries. We've found evidence to suggest they might have had them, but what they needed them for remains a mystery. There are conflicting reports about how the battery was discovered, but some sources say it was found near Baghdad in 1936 in the Kujat Rabu ruins. Wilhelm Koenig is believed to be the first person to study it, and it was described as a small, vase-shaped yellow clay pot standing at 5 inches tall with a 1.5-inch open at the top. It was also thought to be at least 2,000 years old. A copper cylinder with lead tin alloy was found inside the pot, with the bottom capped with copper and featuring an asphalt seal. Inside the cylinder was an iron rod, which was held in place with asphalt. As the iron rod showed signs of corrosion, it's believed it might have held an acidic agent liquid, such as vinegar or wine. When replicas of the battery were made, they produced half a volt of electricity. While they wouldn't have needed batteries to create electronics, some experts think they might have been used for electroplating, although some scientists also think they weren't used as batteries at all. Instead, they might have been used to hold parchment paper. Number 10. The Clava Cairns 
The Clava Cairn is a chamber tomb cairn from the Bronze Age that got its name from three cairns east of Inverness in Scotland called Balnoiran of Clava. In this part of Inverness, there are at least 50 cairns of two types. The first type of cairn has a corbelled passage grave with one burial chamber connected to the entrance by a short passage. It also has a southwest facing opening covered in a cairn of stones. The other type of cairn is in the shape of a ring with no roof and no way to access it from the outside. Clava cairns typically house burial remains, but these ones in particular only seem to have one or two bodies in each. And since the second type of cairn had no entrance, it's believed that they had no intention of visiting their dead or adding bodies in the future. This wasn't commonly seen with Neolithic cairn tombs. Number 9. The Bermuda Triangle the Bermuda Triangle is a stretch of water forming a type of triangle between Miami, San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda. It spans hundreds of thousands of square miles across the North Atlantic Ocean and experiences heavy ship traffic to and from the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast. This part of the ocean looks like any other, but it's different. It's called the Bermuda Triangle, and it's an area where there have been many unexplained disappearances. People have gone missing from planes and ships never to be seen again, which makes people think that if you travel in the Bermuda Triangle, you'll go missing. Now, there definitely are more disappearances in this part of the world than most others, but is it as spooky as it sounds? There have been plenty of theories surrounding why this might be. Some people say that because it has some of the most ship activity, there are gonna be more accidents statistically. Plus, the area experiences hurricanes, so it can sometimes be a recipe for disaster. Others believe the Bermuda Triangle is on magnetism, which might explain reports of incorrect compass readings causing people to get lost in the area, but there doesn't seem to be any solid evidence of magnetic disturbances. More recently, scientists have toyed with the idea of giant bubbles being released from methane deposits under the water. These might swallow ships, which might explain why we rarely find ships that have gone missing. But to tell you the truth, we might never know with any certainty why this area is just so downright spooky when it comes to disappearances. Number 8. Aluminum Wedge of Ayud. The object of Ayud, also called the Aluminum Wedge of Ayud, was an object found 35 feet under the sand on the banks of the Moors River in Romania. It was found alongside mastodon bones and is one of the most mysterious discoveries of our time. Now, finding a chunk of metal might not seem all that interesting, but evidence suggests that the object is about 10,000 years old. We didn't know about aluminum until around the 1700s. According to a scientific analysis, it's 89% aluminum and the remainder is copper, zinc, silicon, cadmium, nickel, and cobalt. To make aluminum, you need the temperatures to be at least 1,000 degrees, and mass production didn't even begin until 1885. While there isn't much information on the dating technique used on this object, some sources report that it was covered in an oxide layer dating back about 400 years and that the material underneath was thousands of years old. Could aliens be involved? Well, I mean, we did say that we didn't know about aluminum until the 1800s, but that's not to say that other light forces didn't. Its discovery made some people believe that the object arrived on Earth with an alien spacecraft. Many people who have examined it also say that it's not a natural formation, so it had to have been made by someone. As of 1995, the aluminum wedge is no longer on display to the public and it's hidden in an undisclosed location. Number 7. The Cockno Stone Scotland has many incredible ancient artifacts and structures, but one of the lesser known ones is the Cockno Stone. That's because it has intentionally been buried to protect it. The Cockno Stone is a 5,000 year old stone slab with swirling geometric patterns. It's located in West Dunbartonshire, Glasgow and measures 43 feet by 26 feet with cup and ring marks. Most people in the area have known about it since the 19th century, and it's often described as one of the best examples of art like it in Europe. Europe. Reverend James Harvey unearthed the stone in 1887 and left it uncovered and unprotected. By the time the 1960s rolled around, it had been so damaged by the elements and vandals graffitiing it that archaeologists decided to bury it to protect it. It wasn't until 2016 that they decided to excavate it again and use advanced surveying and photographing techniques to record it and learn more about it. When it was excavated for that second time, archaeologists found 19th and 20th century graffiti and painted lines that archaeologists 
archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann had made when he worked at the site in the late 1930s. He was trying to prove that the symbols were used for predicting eclipses and marking sun and moon movements. But to this day, we still actually don't know the meaning of the artwork. Number 6. The Bolshoi Zayatsky Labyrinths one of the main attractions of the Solovetsky Archipelago is Bolshoi Zayatsky Island. Here, you'll see some of the largest stone labyrinths in Europe. Hundreds of rocks have been positioned in about 14 spirals with piles of boulders nearby. We didn't always know that the archipelago was inhabited during ancient times, but now we know. Radiocarbon analysis has shown that humans lived there between the 6th and 7th millennium BC, and the labyrinths date back to about the 1st and 2nd millennium BC. All the labyrinths are unique. Some are concentric, others are crosswise, and some are one helix and two helix. They also vary in diameter from 16 feet to 98 feet and are best viewed from above. Perhaps most interesting is that they've naturally stayed in their various spiral patterns. No mortar was used to create them. Instead, they are naturally shaped with no signs of any processing. Scientists can only guess as to why they were made. According to some sources, they belong to one particular group of people and likely had a symbolic or mythical meaning, such as symbolizing the infinity of the world. In some cultures, labyrinths are also considered holy places. Number 5. Puma Punk You Puma Punkyu near Tiwanaku in western Bolivia is a human-made terraced platform mound and monumental structure dating back to the 6th century. It forms part of the Puma Punkyu complex and is significant in Inca traditions. Many people believe it's where the world was created. When it was built, it was described as wondrous, with its many polished metal plaques, fabric ornamentation, and colored ceramics. It was likely visited by beautifully dressed citizens, priests, and the elite. They would come from far and wide to use it as a spiritual and ritual center, and some experts think this particular area was the center of the Andean world, attracting pilgrims from all over the country. However, there are still many questions surrounding what it was built for and how old it really is. This is because of its age, deteriorated state from looting, stone mining, and treasure hunting, and the lack of written records about it. Still, many tourists flock to the site to see the ruins of Puma Punkyu, especially since there are still so many amazing monoliths and architectural forms to see. Number 4. The Copper Scroll Scientists aren't intrigued by the Copper Scroll itself. They know that it describes a list of buried treasure. It was found, along with hundreds of other documents, in a cave near Qumran on the West Bank. But how it differs from the other scrolls and documents baffles them. While most of the Dead Sea Scrolls were written on parchment and papyrus, the Copper Scroll is etched on metal. There are also several other differences. The other scrolls feature literary Hebrew, while the Copper Scroll has a type of Hebrew that they believe was used much later. Even the way the words are spelled, the genre, the map, and the script used to write the letters differed significantly from the other scrolls. So if it wasn't the fact that it was etched on metal that stood out, it was definitely these points. Some experts also think that the Copper Scroll was placed in Cave 3 much later than the rest of the scrolls were placed in the other caves. As a result, some people believe it shouldn't form part of the collection. It's just so different. Treasure hunters even go so far as to say that because so many scholars refer to it to raise money and bring attention to some of their claims, it was a hoax to draw attention to the other scrolls and their research efforts in general. Number 3. Roman Dodecahedrons very rarely do we encounter any ancient artifacts that we're unsure about, as in, we typically know what they were used for to a certain degree, but not the Roman dodecahedron. This copper alloy object remains a mystery. It's a small, hollow object with 12 flat sides, each of which has holes connecting to an open center. Experts have dated it back to between the 2nd and 4th centuries AD, and there have been about 116 of them found to date. The very first one was discovered in 1739, and now, versions of it have been found in Wales, Spain, Italy, Hungary, Germany, and France. Most are between 1.6 to 4.3 inches in size, and one that was previously thought to be a dodecahedron has since been reclassified as a Roman icosahedron. What stumps scientists is the lack of information about them. There hasn't been any mention of them in pictures of accounts of the time. Some people believe that they might have been used as survey instruments for estimating distances and sizes, while others think they might have helped farmers work out when to plant their winter grain. As some 
dodecahedrons were discovered in coin hoards, it's believed that they were either connected with coins or were valuable. Number 2. Gobekli Tepe Move over, Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid of Giza. We've got another important site worthy of your attention, and that's Gobekli Tepe. Gobekli Tepe was built between the 10th and 9th millennium BC, but it was only discovered in 1994 by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. It's believed to be about 7,000 years older than both the Great Pyramid of Giza and Stonehenge. For a long time, archaeologists thought Neolithic hunter-gatherers were responsible for its creation, but its architectural techniques were actually quite similar to those used in pyramids in Egypt. It's believed the creators would have needed to have at least a small amount of geometry and math knowledge. They also needed to know how to lift stones weighing up to 20 tons. Even though there's confusion around who built Gobekli Tepe and how they built it, it's thought to be the earliest known creation for agriculture. Civilizations of this time period were mostly nomadic, but the Gobekli Tepe points to the domestication of goats, pigs, cows, and sheep. Number 1. Nazca Lines the Nazca Lines are geoglyphs in the soil of the Nazca Desert in southern Peru. It's believed people made them by creating shallow incisions in the desert floor and by removing pebbles to reveal different colored dirt. So far, experts have found two major areas of Nazca Lines dating back to 400 and 200 BCE and another from 200 BCE to 500 CE. Even recently, we've discovered up to 100 new figures with the use of drones. While many of the Nazca Lines are just that, lines, others are figures of animals and plants. Weirdly, they are best viewed from the air, so it makes you wonder how the creators managed to make such picture-perfect images without having the same view that we do now from modern aircraft and drones. There are many weird and wonderful Nazca lines to enjoy from the sky, such as a human, dog, cat, monkey, fish, spider, and lizard. However, there are also geometric shapes and simple lines. They've been classed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1994. Just when you thought our planet couldn't get any more interesting, researchers and scientists stumble across things that have us scratching our heads. Do you think any of these discoveries could change the course of history? What would you do if you made a brand new discovery? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!